The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Hi, I'm Amber Bell, and this is Real Agriculture. I'm here with Rosie Xiao today with Alberta Grains, and we're going to be talking about plant counts, emergence, and seeding rate, and why all of this is important for producers. So, Rosie, why don't you tell me about uh, plant counts and why why it's an important thing to be doing for producers? Yeah, definitely. We are standing in a field that was seeded in the last week of April, and now it's the perfect time to come back to do your plant counts because the plants are at one to two leaf stage. You let, give them enough time to emerge, but not wait for them to get too big to be challenging to count. Now is the perfect time. And why is plant count important? Because it helps you to get a hold of how many of your plants actually emerge and help you adjust your seeding rate to optimize that to maximize your yield in the future. Okay, so Rosie, how do you do plant counts? Yeah, um, basically it's as um, obvious as it sounds. You just count the plant in a square foot area. First, you want to pick a representative area in your field, not at the headlands, avoid the low lane area or hilltops. And where we are standing right now, it's actually a good area of the field. And you want to count six to 10 um, spots uh, to make sure you are getting a good average overall. And there are a couple ways to, to count a square foot of plant. One way is you can bring a tool uh, that is a square foot and throw it in the field and wherever it lands, count the plant within that square foot. The other way, you just need a tape measure. And because one square foot is 12 inches by 12 inches, that's 144 square inches. And you divide that 144 by your row spacing, for example, nine inches. Then in that case, you count a 16 inch long row. And that is your plant count for a square foot. In the end, you take the average of the six to 10 uh, spots you count and you get your plant count. Okay, so we talked a little bit about how to do plant counts. Now, what exactly can you do with those? What would be the point of going on the field and doing that? It's actually the necessary part to calculate your, the emergence mortality of the crop. The emergence mortality is the difference between the amount of viable seed you put in the ground and the amount of plants that actually emerge and be able to become established plant. For example, if you seed 35, a viable seeds per square foot and you come back and count the plants and realize oh there are 30 plants here then your emergence percentage is 30 divided by 35 that is 86 percent in this case the emergence mortality is 14 percent so Emergence mortality can vary year to year and field to field. That is why it's important for you to come to the field, count the plants and get an idea of how it varies between your different fields and year to year. So in the future, you can apply these numbers to make your seeding rate more accurate and maximize your yield. So how do you calculate your emergence mortality and how do you adjust your future seeding rates dependent on that? Yeah, so um, to apply your emergence mortality into calculating your future seeding rate, uh, the first thing you want to do in future years is to set a target plant stand. And you can get it from your local agronomist or from the other agronomy resources. And then that's where emergence mortality and germination rate comes into play. So germination rate is uh, the amount of seed that is able to germinate under ideal conditions. And you can get this number from your accredited seed lab by sending them a seed sample. Uh, the emergence mortality is the difference between the amount of viable seed and the amount of established plant. So by applying these two numbers, uh, you get an idea of, okay, within that amount of seed I put into the ground, how many of them will actually become um, established plants. Yeah, another thing you want to consider while calculating your seeding rate is thousand kernel weight because it can change the amount of the seed you need by quite a bit. 
Then we will use an example here. If you're sitting by 35 seats per square foot, and you get a good seat lot that has a germination rate of 95%, and the emergence mortality is 10%. In this case, you need about 124 pounds per acre if the 1,000 kernel weight is 35 grams. But in another situation, if the 1,000 kernel weight is 45 grams, the amount of seed required per acre will be one, around 159 pounds. That is 35 pounds difference per acre, or 28%, and that is quite a bit. If you're not considering a 1,000 kernel weight while calculating your seeding rate, it's very easy to over or under seed. So in the future, definitely send your seed in for a test or count the 1,000 kernel weight at your own home to make sure you consider that into your seeding rate. So how exactly does seeding rate and in turn plant sand actually affect yields? Yeah, uh, seeding rate affect plant, uh, crop yield by influencing the most important yield component, that is the amount of head per square foot. It influences in a couple of ways. One is the plant stand or actual amount of plant per square foot, and the other way is how many tillers each plant produces. Research has shown that doesn't matter if it's dry or wet conditions, usually the yield is maximized when the plant produces one or two tillers. A further late tillers will actually sometimes take the resources away from the main tillers, and they can influence the yield uh, or the harvest by um, delaying the harvest because the late tillers matures later. Another way that um, plant stand can influence your yield is higher seeding rate or plant stand can compete better with the weeds. Research by Charles Geddes at AFC um, Lethbridge actually found by doubling the wheat seeding rate and narrow row spacing, they can actually reduce kosher biomass by 80% and the kosher seed bank by 72%. So in that case, it's equivalent of a good herbicide. So actually by seeding, a proper seeding rate can help you better compete the, with the weeds and that helps with uh, the crop yield in the end. Okay, so how do varieties differ and how do they respond to different seeding rates when it's out in the field? Actually, there hasn't been a ton of study done on how uh, varieties respond differently to a uh, different seeding rate. But generally, if you're planting a solid stem wheat variety, uh, you do not want to seed a too high, high of a rate because they need some space for that pith to develop well to for them to actually be solid stem and be tolerant to wheat stem sawfly. And so that's one note just to pay attention to. So does seeding rate actually affect plant health and grain quality as well as yield, or is that just a, not a thing? Uh, definitely, seeding rates can impact the plant health and uh, grain quality. So as I mentioned earlier, but if the seeding rate is too low, the plants will compensate by tillering more, but then the tiller they produce later are generally smaller and have smaller heads and they tend to be later in stage and they will mature later too. They will cause challenges when you're at harvest time, you're trying to get it done but some grains are just too high of, of a moisture and nobody wants that situation. Um, it influences the plant health by say um, if the farmer is, is trying to t um, manage Physerum head blight using a fungicide. The optimum window is actually pretty narrow. You, it is between head fully emerged to that mid anthesis stage. You have at most a week of a window. In that case, if the late tillers are at a different stage from the main tillers, it makes it much more challenging to time that fungicide. And if the farmers actually spray that fungicide, it will ev inevitably be less effective because some of the tillers are just not at the correct stage. It also happens if uh, producers are trying to spray that pre-harvest herbicide or pre-harvest glyphosate to keep the market access open. Um, it's recommended to spray that glyphosate after the green moisture is below or equal to 30 percent and in that case and that is for the latest tillers um, if the late tillers are dragging behind that will make it more challenging to spray that um, pre-harvest glyphosate too so overall if 
you want a uniform crop for a smoother harvest and to time your pest management strategies. And that's where seeding rate can come in to help you to get that more uniform crop. Are there any practical tips, tricks that farmers can use to optimize their seeding rate for crop production, for wheat production? Yeah, um, the, one of the things I will restress is go out and count your plant stand and get to know your emergence mortality. And right now or around three weeks after seeding is the perfect time to do it. The other one is send your seed lot into accredited seed lab to do a test so you get to know the germination rate, the thousand kernel weight and use them into the math of calculating your seeding rate. And in that way you also know if there are any potential um, pathogens or seed infections that you need to uh, pay attention to. And the last one is if you are concerned about late harvest, if you are seeding later, then using a higher seeding rate will help you the crop to mature faster and more uniformly and that will help you to have a smoother harvest. That is so much information. Thank you so much for joining us and I hope you guys have an amazing wheat seeding season. Um, and that was Roxy with Alberta Grains.